the very least, check them out before the storm hits. In San Luis Obispo, Kimberly Cruz, KSBY News. AAA recommends conducting a run-through to make sure your headlights, taillights, brake lights, and turn signals are also functioning properly. An evacuation warning is in effect for some of the area near the Alisal Fire Burn. These include west of Las Flores Canyon, east of Mariposa Arena, and south of West Camino Cielo. Residents in these areas should be ready to leave at a moment's notice. More information on the evacuation warning can be found on KSBY.com. And for those seeking shelter from the storm, the South County Warming Center will be open the next three nights. That's at 800 West Branch Street in Arroyo Grande. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. each night, and guests are asked to come no later than 8 p.m. San Luis Obispo will be opening a warming center tonight at 40 Prado Road. Check-in is from 7 to 9 p.m. tonight, so you still have a couple minutes right there. And now we move to a story making national headlines. Rescue and recovery teams are working through miles of debris across five states after a string of deadly tornadoes. Jay Gray has the latest on the impact that has unfolded across the southeast and midwest. Deep scars stretch for hundreds of miles across five states, defined by twisted metal, splintered wood and shattered glass, remnants of life before the storms. It's never going to be the same. My neighborhood isn't going to be the same, and the town isn't going to be the same. Dozens of towns stolen away by a string of deadly tornadoes. Three dozen or more across the Midwest and Southeast. Mayfield, Kentucky, taking the most severe hit. The focus here and across the strike zone right now, working through the wreckage. The volunteerism, the what can I do, is what gives us hope today. Hope challenged as the number of victims lost and injured continues to climb. This is personal and when you see it, there's no lens big enough to capture just how awful um, this is. Autumn Kirks clings to her so children, you, you their dad, her I mean, husband, still missing. Know. Trying to be strong for them, is the, that's the only thing keeping me going right now. They're my rock right now, they're, they're my world. A world that for so many families has been torn apart and scattered for miles. Jay Gray, KSBY News, Mayfield, Kentucky. The Cal Poly class of 2020 held their commencement celebration today at the Alex G. Spano Stadium. Recent graduates had their chance to walk across the stage after it was canceled last year due to the pandemic. Around 1,400 graduates from all six colleges came back to campus to take part in this very special ceremony. I wasn't too surprised. I knew everybody that went here had a great time, enjoyed it, made a bunch of friends. Um, so I knew there would be a, a good turnout, but seeing every single person that I saw, you know, four years at Cal Poly here, it's been amazing um, and just really thankful that we were able to come back here and, and walk. Garrett has been working in the tech industry for about a year since his graduation and yesterday Cal Poly held their commencement ceremony for the fall class of 2021 with more than 810 undergraduate students and 120 master students all receiving their diplomas. So congratulations to those grads. And a Cal Poly lecturer is turning his love for music into a fundraiser for local kids battling cancer. Anthony Randazzo created the Bash Cancer Fest as a tribute to his aunt. The Food and Music Festival was open to all community members and all proceeds go directly to the Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation, a nonprofit that provides financial aid, emotional support and educational advocacy for low to moderate income families. It's such a struggle whenever cancer you know, enters a family uh, and so the Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation is just an unbelievable organization. They're the, the beneficiary this year so everything's going directly to them and then they disperse the money and financial, financial assistance in the tri-counties to local kids battling cancer. Additional fundraising activities at the Bash Cancer Fest included a silent auction and raffle. And 
there is just one week left of our annual 10th annual season of Hope Food and Toy Drive. It is a great time of the year to come together and help our neighbors in need here on the Central Coast. There are more than 100 drop-off locations collecting donations daily, including 62 in San Luis Obispo County and 46 in Santa Barbara County. You can drop off any new unwrapped toys and non-perishable food items. And you can drop off your donations with us on air this week. Tomorrow, we will be at the Five Cities Fire Authority in Arroyo Grande. And on Tuesday, we will be at the Coastal Communities Physician Network's location in Templeton. For more information, head to KSBY.com. We are accepting donations through next Friday. And Taylor, we have that checklist, right? You check your car, you have your umbrella jacket. I know, we were saying this yesterday, but a lot of Californians probably don't have proper attire for rain. And this is going to be such a significant amount coming down mainly Monday afternoon into evening. I'll get into all the details on how many inches your area is going to look to see coming up in that microclimate forecast. And the San Luis Obispo Mission celebrates the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And later, the Brigetti Warriors and Morro Bay Pirates' historic seasons have come to a close. Dusty Baker explains why these two teams will forever be remembered on the Central Coast, next in sports. Welcome back. December 12th is the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe, who is also known as the Empress of the Americas. The mission of San Luis Obispo held a nine-day rosary to commemorate her. Today, it wrapped up with a special service with mariachi music and food. It is believed by Catholic Hispanics she made an appearance in a mountain named El Tepeyac in Mexico City in 1531. Tradition has it she asked a young man, Juan Diego, to build a church for her, which is where the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe now stands in Mexico City. And today was an emotional day for many. Mexico lost a musical legend and icon, Vicente Fernández, known as El Rey or the King of Ranchera Music. <laughs> Songs such as Volver, Volver and El Rey raised multiple generations of Latinos around the world. Fernandez suffered complications after a fall and had been hospitalized since August. According to the Fernandez family, he passed away around 6 a.m. this morning at the age of 81. We spoke to a local mariachi band about the impact Fernandez had in their musical journey. We have ours, the mariachis. It was everything to us. We learn his songs. Um, emotionally, we are hurt really badly. Um, I think everyone, not just us, they play the Mexican music. Um, it's a very bad last. Vicente Fernandez was awarded three Grammys in his stellar career. Condolences to his family members and fans. And now let's send things over to Taylor to tell us more about the upcoming storm. Well, we've got a lot of active weather going on in the next couple of days here, and we'll get into that. But let's take a look at Morro Bay today because we just took a look at Cayucas, and Morro Bay is looking very similar. You wouldn't even expect that we're about to get hit with a lot of rain here. 805 webcams showing us people out there enjoying the water. Not really many clouds in the sky, so maybe high-level clouds, but it didn't stop the sunshine. But taking a look at what's going on right now with our radar, this is a live look at where that storm is currently. And it's sitting ma mainly up in Northern California, San a cruise and it's going to inch its way closer. If we zoom out a little bit, you can see we are getting tiny little spots of uh, rain in our lower elevation, or excuse me, in Cambria and uh, Paso Robles area. So that is starting right about now, but if we time it out, you can see when exactly it's going to hit your area. So right here, 6 a.m. on Monday, you can start to see heavier spots of downpours, that yellow, coming into Cambria as we go into Monday, mainly Monday afternoon. This rain starts to be more widespread, and we do have some heavier downpour in San Luis Obispo and Paso Robles heading into Monday evening. This is when we'll see the majority of that rain. A lot of heavier rain coming down across the forecast. Lompoc down on the south coast and especially San Luis Obispo and Paso Robles. We are actually looking to get the most right here in San Luis Obispo. Continuing into Monday night, that storm is making its way south. We've got some heavier rain on the south coast in Santa Barbara. That's going to move out as we head into Tuesday. You can see that not the whole forecast area here is looking at rain, but we still 
do have pockets of heavy rain, mainly in Lompoc, coming up, almost clipping Santa Maria there as well. As we head into Tuesday night, though, that does clear out, and Tuesday night is when we'll see the end of this storm and things will dry out a little bit. But let's take a look at rain totals by Monday morning, 6 a.m. Right when we're starting to feel that rain pushed in, we're already looking at a tenth of an inch in Paso Robles and almost an inch in Cambria. Continuing into Monday evening, that's when we'll see a lot of that rain start to hit two and a half inches in San Luis Obispo and almost two in Cambria and same with Paso. And now into Tuesday evening, this is when we're going to stop the rain. This is when it'll stop and we're almost at three inches. Like I was saying, San, San Luis Obispo going to see the most of that rain in this storm and we're about three inches when we kind of tap out here. Now because of all that rain, especially like I was showing you in the south coast as it heads into Tuesday, that's when we'll see a flash flood warning. So the Al burn scar is a concern through Monday night. That's when Santa Barbara and the south coast will see the majority of that rain and we could see some loose debris and people need to be ready if you live in that area to get out fast. Now Monday night into Tuesday morning, we also have a high wind watch and warning. That's that's going to be for San Luis Obispo and Paso Robles. We could see up to 60 mile an hour gusts. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Sunday is a little bit breezy heading into Monday. Like I was saying yesterday, that wind whipping through San Luis Obispo and Paso Robles up to 60 miles an hour. Things finally dying down as we head into Tuesday and those winds gone basically by Wednesday when we start to see that active weather go bye bye. What I'm talking about with that active weather going bye bye, this is Monday night when we'll see the most of that rain heading out south from us as we head into Tuesday evening Wednesday another ridge builds we get dry before another system moves in on Thursday but taking a look at tomorrow temperatures in the 60s mainly very very low here mid 50s for Morro Bay Cayucas and Cambria taking a look at Napomo 60 or Rio Grande 60 and Pismo Beach also looking to be 61 upper 50s across the board here look at that seven day forecast we're not going to finally see that sunshine roll back through until next weekend and but we'll still be in those mid 50s across the board in both of our areas Santa Maria Santa Barbara San Luis Obispo and Paso